so hello guys welcome to our second part of the chapter that we're doing about forecasting just recall to what we did for our first exercise i mean our first part we just started uh, the video with a presentation and an introduction about forecasting what is forecasting and how it is applied in the real world we gave some example like mcdonald kfc and how they perform and also an example about how forecasting affect the different functions of a company and then next what we did is uh, we try to explain the different method that can be used when we want to solve a forecasting problem and finally we ended up with something like uh, forecasting errors where we say that we have um, the mean absolute deviation which we call the MID and the MSE which is the mean squared error those are methods that you can use when it comes to calculate the forecasting error remember we say that the forecasting error is the difference between what you planned and what you actually realized we might have forecast that you're going to sell 500 units but then it happened that we sold 495 so the difference between them this is what we call the forecast error now we start with another exercise which is 4.1 they are talking about this hospital that they are considering about purchasing a new ambulance so the decision they see that it will be made according to the mileage that will be driven next year so from the information that we already have in the previous year we already have some mileage so the first question was to know, according to the, the mileage that we have so far, what is going to be the forecast of the next year, which is the sixth year, when it comes to the mileage. So they wanted us to do a two-year moving average, and we did it. Now, this was part A of the question. Now, part B, they want us to find the MAD, which is the mean absolute deviation. As, as I said, it's another way of finding how to call it. Uh, of measuring the forecasting error so they say that find an MID, uh, MAD based on the second on the two-year moving average they always give they already give us a hint saying that you will have only three years of much data so this is what we did for our previous exercise we calculate for a the two-year moving average for the sixth year and we found it now they want us to calculate now the MAD so what we do is we still have the same table that we have but now this one is applied for question B this one is an MAD calculation that you are doing and this is our table so we need to have another column here to get our MAD for the two years because we are working with the two years uh, two year moving average that means there's nothing that was forecasted for the first year. Nothing was forecasted for the second year. So we are going to remember that the MAD is what we have like the actual demand minus uh, the forecasted one. This is how we do. At least the mean error, uh, this is the error uh, between bracket. This is what we call the forecast error. And we divide by the number of our observation. But now, the MID now will be the total, the sum of everything, which is the total. But then, so we are going to start, we are going to work with those years where we only have the actual and we have the forecast. The mileage that we have here, this is what you're going to, to call the actual. In short, this is what happened. We didn't forecast. So it happened that the reality showed us that we used 3.4 mileage for the third year and now the tier moving average now this is what we did like this is what we call the forecast this is what we forecasted in short we didn't forecast anything for the first and second year but the third year we forecasted 3.5 mileage really will be using but it happened that we only use 3.4 so we see that there's already a gap and that gap that is what we call the the forecast error so in this case what we do is like we take the actual which is uh, 3.4 minus uh, the, the demand, which is uh, 305, uh, 3,500, which is 100. The difference between, uh, actually, is a negative 100. But I want to emphasize on the fact that here we are working with absolute values. So the values that we have, they will always be positive. So in that regard, I'm not going to put a negative sign. I'll put it before. I'll put it already a positive sign. So, yeah, it's 100 here. Now, for four, the actual is 3.8, and what we forecasted was 3.7. So, the difference is 100 again. And when it comes to five, we forecasted 3.7. 
but uh, we got 3.6 the difference again is 100 so what we need to do now we need to get a total of all our average of all our errors if we can say so so the total here the total is 100 plus 100 plus 100 which uh sorry plus 100 plus 100 which gives you 300 and then we need to divide it by the number of observations if you can say so the number of period where we observed so we observed the first actually the third was the first the fourth was the second and the thief was the third so in short our n will be equal to five with n i mean n is equal to three so our mad will be mad will be our 300 that we got and we divide by the number of observation and our mad is 100 in short this is how we found our uh how do you call it this is how you manage to find the moving average deviation uh not moving average i meant mean absolute deviation so now this was for question uh b now this is question c for question c what they say is they want us to use a weighted two years moving average with different weight of 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 to forecast the next year mileage now they're saying that the weight of six years is applied to the most recent year and then they want us to calculate again the mid result from using this approach when it comes to forecasting so remember what we said we say that the moving average the weighted moving average is almost the same as the moving average the normal one it's just that here we are using weight and according to what they already said they said that we are going to use the um, the 0 0.6 for the more recent so it's more like the highest weight will be applied to the more recent uh to the more recent period so now what you are working is um, is question b i mean question c so we are on question C and this is the table. This is the table that we have. But now what we are going to work on will be the um, weighted average. Weighted moving average. Remember what they said is they say that the the heaviest weight will be applied to the more recent period. So in this case, remember it's still two months. So we are going to do. We are going to start again for from the third year. So what we do is like, if we need to make a focus of the third year, that means we are going to involve the demand that we got for our first and second year. So the second year is the more recent one compared to the third. So that's why we are going to use uh, that weight of 0 0.6. That we multiply by the 4,000 plus. Uh, now the other weight which is 0 0.4 and we multiply by 3000 i want you to notice something the weight that will be given to you that will always be equal to one so if we take 0 0.6 plus 0 0.4 you are going to get one even if you have three or four weight that will always add up to one just make sure that this is just basic calculation before you start and then we need to divide by a total and our total in this case will be 0 0.6 plus 0 0.4 which is one in short but they just put one like this so what we do like we have 0 0.6 times 4000 plus uh, 0 0.4 times 3000 so the value that we have is 3.6 then what we do next is for the fourth period we still have our 0 0.6 that we multiply by uh, in this case, the more recent period now becomes the third, which is 3.4 plus uh, the 0, 0.4 that we got, and we multiply by 4,000, and we divide everything by 1. So we have 0, 0.6 times 3.4 plus the 0, 0.4 times 4,000. 4, and the value that we get is 3640 and then what we have is uh 
for the the fifth year is 0 0.6 again time open the bracket the most recent in this case is the fourth the fourth year which is 3.8 plus uh, 0 0.4 and we multiply again by sorry this one is was a multiplication from here so we multiply uh, by 3.4 and we divide everything by one so what we get is 0 0.6 times 3.8 plus 0 0.4 times 3.4 so the value that we get again is 3640 I'm not sure but let me just try to calculate it again just for confirmation purpose yeah I got 3,640 and we need to do it for the six year too for our six year what we do is the most recent period here is the uh, the, the the fifth year which is 3,700 plus but the weight we're going to use is still 4 and we multiply it by our 3.8 and we divide again by 1 Normally, in this case here, yeah, it's not like it's an average like what we do. The end here is divided by 1 because it's the sum of our weight. I just want to insist on this one. This is how we manage to get the 1. It's not like the sum of the period that we are having. So, in this case, uh, what we do is like we have our 3, 7 times 0, 0,6 plus 3.8 times 0, 0,4. And the value that we get is 3740 this is the value that we get now that we managed to get the forecast the the two how do you call it a two months sorry it's not two months it's two years sorry i was thinking of months so it's two years two years moving average so from here what we need to do again again we do our uh, mad because this is what is required in the question they're asking what am i the result from using this approach to forecasting so we need to add another column here for us to find our mad the calculation are still the same we take the actual minus um the, the recent now is the actual minus the forecast and we get our value so in this case the actual is 2.83.4 minus the recent which is i mean the forecast which is 3.6 and the difference is going to give you a negative 200 but because you are working it as a uh, absolute value so it's going to be 200 it's going to be positive and then here the actual is 3.8 minus the forecast which is 36.40 3.8 minus 36.40 we get 160 and we divide again uh, i mean we go to the last one we we had a demand of 3.7 minus the forecast of 3640 which gives us 37 minus 3640 which gives us 60. now from here again we calculate our mad mad we get the total of all our values which is 200 plus 160 plus 60 and we get 360 plus 16 which gives 420 and we divide here the, the end that we are using is the number of observation again so the number of observation in this case is still 3 so that means our MAD will be equal to uh, 420 that we divide by 3 420 divided by 3 gives us 140 so this is the MAD to this question that we are doing about the weighted two years moving average so in this case we calculated the weight that we got and we did the mad so our next video will be that's the last question that we're going to compute the forecast for six years using exponential smoothing so far thank you so much for the video i hope that it was helpful thank you